A cool news for everyone who's been following along, Blackmagic just released the 17th version of the pre-beta autofocus firmware for the full frame Cinema Camera 6K. Now my previous autofocus update video, I showed how to actually use the autofocus system as well as how well it functions when tracking faces and objects. Now that video was from three firmware versions ago, so here are the quick updates for Blackmagic's autofocus system, which honestly, is pretty freaking good. Now the first one is that it does a much better job of keeping up with a moving object or keeping up with a static object in a moving frame. And when it does lose focus, it manages to find that object and retrack much quicker than it did previously. In addition to that, it's much better at finding faces even under low light conditions. In my test here, you can actually see that I have the skin tone underexposed. It should be sort of a peachy color in the highlights. We have it down in the greens on the false color, and we are shooting at a pull down from second native ISO. And as a reminder, this is a low light condition, not a no light condition. If you don't have light, you can't see your subject, there's no autofocus tracking, and you wouldn't want the noise in that shot anyway. Now, as you can see, even when the subject moves around quite a bit, hides her face, and even when I block the lens with my body, it refines the subject's face very quickly and begins tracking again right away. Even when I cover the lens, have my model move, it quickly finds where the face is moved to and continues autofocusing just fine. They've added an extra feature regarding the autofocus button on the camera itself. So for example, if you know your subject is going to move or you're going to do a camera move and you don't want autofocus to continue tracking, you can press and hold the autofocus button, which will actually pause the autofocus by overriding the lens's autofocus switch, putting it into manual focus mode until you release the autofocus button, at which point it will continue to track. And while object tracking can still be a little finicky, given that an object could be a hammer or a banana or a cat, it'll be interesting to see how far the object tracking goes from here in terms of stability and reliability. But from what I'm seeing, the way that the facial tracking is already is actually at a level that I might use on a professional set. Now, before we jump into the next part of the video, I have downloaded and rehosted the 17th version of the autofocus firmware build. You can find that link in the description below this video. All right, now for those of you who missed it or who'd like a refresher on how to actually activate and use the autofocus system, that information is coming up right now from the previous video. Now, starting off with the one click or single touch autofocus, it does work just like it used to. You touch a part of the screen, it grabs focus on that object, it stops auto-focusing so that if something moves into or out of that area, it doesn't continue to search and find things. And it does seem to be actually faster and more accurate than it was previously, and does a little bit less searching to find where something is in focus. When it comes to the continuous single spot focus where you choose a spot just like the one touch, but then it continues to focus on the things as they move forward and back or in and out of that area, that option is actually really useful and super viable, especially for YouTube. And I'll explain why in a minute that it's better for things like this than the face detection. Now, one cool thing, it's been running this whole time and continues to run in this video. So I can do this, and now my hand's in focus, and now my face is in focus, and now my hand's in focus. Right now it's set to somewhere square in here so that when something passes in front, it will focus to that. And then when it moves, it focuses back again. Now if I move out of the way, it's gonna try and focus on the background here, which has fewer defining features. So what I did was I placed a mannequin here in the center of the frame, auto-focused on the center of it, and then I stepped in and moved it out of the way, and now it's continuing to focus on the center of the frame on me. This is, of course, super nice when it comes to reviewing products. Like, let's say I have something in front of me that I want to review and showcase that's around the same focal plane. I have the focus holding on me, but I don't have it specifically looking for my face. So when I want to hold the product up and show you guys directly some really cool facts about it and some features, I can show you this object, move it out of the way, and it focuses back on me again. This is really nice specifically for product demos. Which brings us to our third setting of the autofocus options, which is object tracking. You can actually touch the screen on an object you want to track and it will automatically scale the box to try to detect the edges of that object. And then it'll move the box with the object across the screen, whether the object is moving or the camera is panning or tilting. The problem that can arise with this, however, is that if the object were to rotate and change shape or something moves in front of the object, it will lose track of that object and then have a very hard time finding it again once it's lost its subject. Now, the same is true when it comes to actually detecting and tracking faces. It'll do a great job recognizing that there's a face it needs to focus on, scale the box to fit, and move with the face as it moves around the frame, including receding into the distance and coming up close again. However, once the face leaves the frame or goes behind something, 
it will lose its subject and it will suddenly start to freak out and try to find it again and will continue doing so without just turning off the autofocus system. There will be a link to download this underneath this video in the description. Do know that this is early access to a tool they haven't yet officially released, so there may be some bugs to work out in the firmware. However, my camera, as you can see that I'm recording on now, hasn't bricked and the autofocus is working great. So if you're gonna give it a shot, please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions for me or if there's anything in particular you'd like to see me cover next. Of course, if you found this video helpful, give it a like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. In the meantime, I'm gonna get back to shooting and I'll catch you guys in the next one.